guys good to set up here? Is this on? I can't hear. <laughs> really? <laughs> it gets louder when I start talking. All right, everyone, we're going to get started here with the uh, track house uh, segment of today. Um, we here have here our uh, founder, um, Justin Marks, and our co-owner and Armando Christian Perez. You guys know him as Pitbull. Um, you know, it's been an incredible week already for us. Uh, Justin uh, set up camp here in Nashville. Uh, we've driven a stake pretty deep into the, to the, to the ground here, and we're very proud of it. Um, so it's a, it's a really big week for us, and uh, we appreciate you guys giving us some time to uh, let Justin and, and Armando talk about, you know, what we've got going on at Trackhouse. So, Justin, if you want to get started, just kind of just tell them about where we, uh, wh why you chose Nashville, why this area, and, um, you know, kind of your assessment so far this year. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for being here. It's really nice to see a packed media room, that's for sure. Um, first of all, I just I want to thank uh, Eric Moses and all his staff here. I mean, I, my, my first real stock car race was here at Nashville in 2006 in the ARCA Remax Series, and, and uh, to see Cup come back here and to see this place get, get you know, reborn is, uh, is special to me. I know it's special to a lot of people in the industry, so congrats to all of them. Um, you know, I, I'm here. Trackhouse is here. Armando's here because, you know, NASCAR has this new car coming, and this new car represents, I think, a new era in this, in this sport because we're breaking down barriers for new ownership, and we're providing opportunities for people to rethink the, the business model, what a race team is, and that's exactly what Trackhouse is all about, and, and that's why, you know, we've, we've, we've set up shop here in Nashville. You know, our goal is to, is to have a race shop here one day and to be kind of the, the professional, you know, racing sports team here uh, uh, in Nashville. And I mean, what we're trying to do is, 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 is bring something different, bring something unique to tell a story, to transcend the sport, you know, you know, take NASCAR, use racing as a platform, but, but to tell a bigger story. And, and um, you know, it's just to see things come together like they have this year have been, have been great. Uh, Armando's been wonderful and a great partner, and we've got a lot of big, big things ahead of us. So, um, so it's just a very exciting time, Ty. Yeah, Armando, tell us a little bit about, you know, what your assessment is so far these first few months we've been together uh, and, and why NASCAR and uh, why us? Well, as far as that, I want to say thank you to everybody. We appreciate the opportunity. Congratulations, Eric, on the new, you know, new spot. It's um, why NASCAR, why track house, because it all came together at the right time. I'm a big believer in the law of attraction, and when I say that, I mean it. With that said is when we sat down, we had a meeting, and the meeting was all about a greater initiative. The same way we've done with music to unify people, and I say it all the time, there's only one race, one race only, that's a human race. And when we figure that out, that's what it's all about, is unifying people. So when I saw that the initiative was all about that, is why, why I got involved with, with Justin Ty and, da and Daniel Suarez. Now, the funny thing is that Daniel Suarez was actually, someone spoke to me about him about 10 years ago. His name is Carlos Slim Jr. And he said, hey, keep your eye out for Daniel. He's going to do some, some big things in racing, and he's going to represent for all of us down in, in Mexico. And sure enough, how amazing is it that eight years, I'm sorry, 10 years later, now I'm a part of the team with uh, amazing partners, stand up, solid, which is hard to find in any industry, much, much more in industry, in life. <laughs> so to be able to be here right now is an honor. I see the opportunity. And just the same way we did in music, we're bringing everybody together and using music as a universal language is the same way we're going to do with track house, with race cars and with NASCAR, and that's why it's very exciting, and that's why I'm here. And to Nashville, congratulations, the city is booming. <laughs> um, we got together last night for dinner, and we were able to look over the city, and uh, just give us your assessment of what you saw when you looked at that city and what was going on. <laughs> A lot of bachelorette parties. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people having a lot of fun in Nashville. I think Las Vegas is going to have to catch up now. <laughs> Playing a lot of pit bull music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a good thing. I don't know if that's going to work out after, but hey. <laughs> At least it was a memorable night. Or maybe not. That's right. Yeah, I don't remember much of it. All right, we'll go ahead and turn it on to you guys. Um, let's get started here. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires. Net. Pitbull, uh, listen to all of your music now that you've come into the sport. I'm curious, are you going to rewrite any of it to, for a NASCAR theme? If there's a couple that you could actually work some, some racing in there. Well, it's crazy enough. We were actually going to do something right before everything happened uh, with the pandemic with NASCAR, with the record that I have with Blake Shelton called Get Ready. So that was lined up to be basically the anthem. 
everything happened and obviously things change. Things happen for a reason though because this year we're actually talking about putting an anthem together with a, a crew of different folks. So therefore, everybody gets represented one way or another. I think that's one of the most genius things that Fast and Furious has done with their franchise. That's why they're on Fast and Furious 9, and congratulations to Vin, he's a good friend. But they represent everybody in the movie, and that's what everybody loves to see. The car is what brings it together, the speed is what brings it together, the action is what brings it together. But if everybody being represented is why everybody feels a part invested of it. So to have the next anthem for NASCAR is the same way we're going to do it, where everybody's vested and well represented. Jenna. Jenna Fryer, AP uh, for Justin. Um, you got me? Okay. <laughs> um, you've, you know, you're active in the charter game. Um, two went yesterday. I'm wondering, the, the, those guys at Spire had worked with you before. You seem surprised to not, to learn of it at least. Um, how is it that you didn't get one of the Spire charters? Well, that's a good question, actually. Um, I mean, look, they're, they're, they're running a business that the best way they need to run it. We're focused on track house. I mean, you know, this this the, the charter journey has been that. I mean, it's been a journey, and it's it's an interesting time in the history of the sport with uh, with this charter economy. Um, we're working very hard every day to secure our, our future, and I feel confident about our future. You know, we, we don't. You know, there's nobody here that knows everything that's happening all the time, and there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes. So we can't we can't know everything. You know, two came off the board yesterday, but there's still there's still a lot out there. So I'm confident we're going to get something done. Is the market eight figures? I don't know. I don't know what they paid for it. I mean, I don't know what the market is. I mean, the thing is that the addressable market is so small that the value of a charter is what someone's willing to pay for it. I don't know what they paid for it. So it's who knows. Well, if you NFT it, it God knows what the number might be. No, I don't know. Armando, you had a comment about charters earlier. What was your charter? Well, my comment, you know, Ty kind of explained to me what was going on, and obviously this is a new world to me, and I said, hey, Justin deals with the charter in NASCAR, and I just deal with the charter schools. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, uh, Bob Hockers, Fox Sports. Armando, what, now that you've been in this for a few months, what's one thing that maybe has been a pleasant surprise about being a NASCAR owner and activating it, and what maybe has been your biggest frustration? Well, frustration I don't have any because I look at life as no problems, just solutions. Uh, as far as what's been great about it, let me tell you, the fans, you know, to see the passion, to see the loyalty, to see the, you know, the willing to just run through a wall for the team that they love. And I had a great experience down in Daytona 500 where I happened to cross the street, go to the restaurant, and I got a little corner off in, in, in the P.F. Chang's, and one of the guys comes up to me and he said, hey, you sure don't dress like a NASCAR owner, you know, and messing with me. And I said, yeah, you're right. And then, so I bought him a couple of shots. We, we started drinking, and I said, yeah, but I do drink like a NASCAR owner, don't I? <laughs> so we had a great time, and we, we kept drinking. They take, took a couple pictures, and by the time they left, they had paid for my bill. And that just, it showed a lot to me, you know? And not too many people do those kind of things, and especially in today's day and age where, you know, it's all about instant gratification. Grab your photo, grab your video, do this for me, do me for that. Just for that, that sense of gratitude showed me a lot very pleasant experience and it's been amazing and then on top of that um you know basketball was one of the first things that kept me out of a, a lot of trouble i always say i've never been a troublemaker just always been around trouble i don't know how it worked out <laughs> but basketball was the first thing so michael jordan somebody that i looked up to and uh, I, I still apply his mentality not, not only on when i play ball but in life so to be able to be in a suite next to michael jordan i mean and own uh, be partners in the team track house have Daniel Suarez knowing his story. Ty has an amazing story. It's just all coming together, and I'm excited. Good question. That's how <laughs> I don't know. You know. Maybe I was just a little too suited up. I don't know. I've seen some people out there very sharp. You know. So now I just keep the track house hat on, and it kind of balances it out. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Dave Dowling Fadden with FrenchRitch.com. Pitbull, um, with your partnership with Justin and you showing your interest in NASCAR, what, what are you? Can you share what you're doing? in order to make this collaboration sort of like a two-way street into where, how are you bringing awareness of NASCAR to your other endeavors, like to the entertainment world? What, what, what are you doing to make sure they, they know what you're doing here? Okay, well, for one, I've done it in so many worlds, and when I say I, I mean we, I mean us, I don't do anything by myself. Now, when we opened our first charter school in Miami, Little Havana, my, one of my old neighborhoods, that's, that was eight years ago, we put a NASCAR in the front of it, a friend of mine that happened to be connected uh, with NASCAR and just parked it outside. Now when the kids from the neighborhoods that come from all 
different neighborhoods, Miami being a melting pot, they saw that NASCAR, it's like they saw a spaceship. So right there, I saw the disconnect on, wow, there's a community and there's a culture that really has no clue what this world is about, but yet it's an amazing opportunity, right? So our school is sport, it's called SLAM, which stands for Sports Leadership Arts and Management. And what that is about is teaching these kids how there's another world in any world they may be in love with. All kids want to become a pro athlete when we're there. All kids love sports. But we teach them if you love sports, where well, you might be a physical therapist, you might be an agent, you might be an attorney, right? So same thing with NASCAR. Like you might not be the driver, but you might end up in the, in the crew. You might end up as an owner. You might end up as an engineer. You might end up being the one um, styling the car. So there's so many ways to bridge that. Now, how in the entertainment business, how does it happen? Well, nobody was looking at NASCAR like that. And that's been one of my, I would say, assets in life, where I'm, I'm always looking at things that people are not looking at. And therefore, that to me is we're living in a, in a world of followers and likes. I like to be a leader, unique, and make a difference. So look the other way and find a way to make a difference. And clearly through music, you know, we'll find ways to either put it in videos, put it in records. I mean, I have a song right now. It's coming out the 25th with Trace Atkins and Luke Bryant. It's called Where Them Country Girls At. And that verse is all based on my experience in Daytona 500. So right there, it just goes to show you. It gives you a sneak peek on the, on the kind of ways that we, we can continue to uh, create awareness of not only the team track house, not only NASCAR, but the most important part, which is the initiative of bringing everybody together and creating opportunity for those that need it the most. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Back here, and then we'll come here. Stephen Toronto, CBS Sports. Justin, uh, when we spoke earlier this week, you had talked about how with the next-gen car, there's going to be uh, less of a... Uh, what, what am I trying to say? There's going to be a less... There's a smaller square... Uh, I, can't, I can't talk right now. I'm sorry. Are you just talking about shop space? Yeah, yeah, shop space. There's going to be a smaller square, square inch footprint for race shops with the next-gen car. Now, now, you're trying to... You're trying to leverage that into creating a public-facing uh, motorsports attraction slash race shop here here in Nashville. But given that uh, most of the existing race shops are in Charlotte and most of that space already exists, how do you, what, what do you anticipate the future of race shops being and uh, how do you anticipate that space being used in the future? Well, I think there's, there's two elements. One is, one is you know, new, new business creation, new teams. Uh, coming out of the box, building a company around, you know, building their infrastructure around um, this new car from scratch. And then I think that there's the business of these existing teams that have to find a way to monetize all this infrastructure that they've built over decades in the sport. So I think for everybody, it's a little bit of a different story, but I, I think we're in a great spot because we're starting from scratch. We're building this company and value engineering this company around the new NASCAR, around this car and around the future of the sport. So it makes us very mobile and modular and allows us to, to pivot and, and think very creatively about how we're going to exist once we sort of start separating ourselves from RCR and becoming more autonomous, autonomous as a business. And it's one of the reasons why we're here in Nashville is that there's a lot of opportunity in this town. It's an entertainment town and there's a lot of opportunity to really, to really rethink that. I think, I think some of these existing teams that have a lot of history in the sport don't necessarily have, have that luxury. Um, because they're committed to big campuses and, and they're, you know, they're committed to the supply chain as it exists in Charlotte. But for us, you know, we're, we're, we're starting from scratch. We're trying to build something special around this new car and around the new business model in NASCAR, and that puts us in a real good spot. Thank you. Sorry I couldn't articulate that. We, did we have right here? At KirschnightCatchFans.com, Justin, to follow up on that, your your vision to bring a team to Nashville and host it in Nashville. What are the benefits of that? How soon do you see that happening? And does what Furniture Row accomplished in Denver, Colorado, give you the confidence that you can do something similar along those lines? Yeah, well, Furniture, furniture Row is a, is a different time in the sport and is a, is a different business model. Um, but I mean, you know, did you ask me why Nashville? Yeah, yeah I mean. This, we're not that far from Charlotte, so, so it's like, you know, it's not, we're not really on so much of an island. I mean, we can still do weekly business with, with our partners and our suppliers in Charlotte. But, you know, this new, re this new car, I believe, represents an opportunity to, to, to rethink, you know, your, your race shop and, and what it is. And, and that's something that Ty and I talk about a lot and something we talked about early in the days of track houses, asking ourselves, what is a race team? Why is a race team in 140,000 square feet in, a, in an industrial park? Well, for a lot of years, it had to be because of engineering and manufacturing. But a lot of that stuff's going away. So as we just sort of wipe the slate clean and start thinking about what, what, what a race shop of the future, race team of the future looks like, 
I think it should be a, a public business. I mean, it's, you know, we've got these amazing race cars, amazing people that work on these race cars. I mean, race shops are really an incredible thing to see, as you know, Chris. And, and I think that people should have access to that and, and to take that content and put it out there in the world uh, is something that's, that's very important to the future trajectory of, of Trackhouse. Um, and, and Nashville is a very quickly growing community. It's an entertainment and event city. That's the business that we're in, entertainment and events. Um, and it represents an opportunity for us to carve a niche out for ourselves in a market where we can really get the community support behind us and we can really be one of the professional sports team in this market. Timing wise, you know, it's a little TBD just because, you know, we all have to learn this new car together. We have to, we have to understand how, you know, how a how business can be built around this new car. Um, but I mean, I, I, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that, you know, in 24 months from now we're, we're racing out of Nashville. But, it, but you know, it's, it's a lot of TBD because we have a lot of learning yet to do. We had a quick online question. Uh, they were asking Armando, um, other than racing uh, this summer in track house, is, they want to know what other things you have going on this summer. What are the things we have going on this summer? Well, it's good to see the world coming back, number one. Number two, getting back to entertaining and giving people that positivity and motivation and, and inspiration to just keep going, especially in these times. So the Roaring Twenties were... 100 years ago, this is the Raging 20, so we're going to be on tour, and we, we will be out, if I'm not mistaken, uh, mid-August, and I'm looking forward to it. We actually had a concert over in Annapolis for the Naval Academy, and that kind of energy that I felt was, I mean, through the roof. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to hit the road again, but more than anything, I'm excited to see those fans out there because I know, I know people need it more than ever. And my, by the way, the name of the tour is, I don't know about you, but I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Chase Willem, uh, Chase Willem, NASCAR.com. This one's for Armando. Um, you've been to a lot of races so far this year, and you've been very active with the team. Why is it important to you to be so front-facing with this team? It's very important for me to be involved because uh, I immersed myself into NASCAR and partnering up with Trackhouse. When we had that conversation down in Miami, I told them this is not about, about, about propaganda, putting a name next to something in order to create excitement or expedite what ever the expectations may be. It's like, nah, I want to be there, I want to learn. And, and just to be a part of a new world, for me, I, in, in music, you know, it's all about being creative. This is another creative space to come up with ideas on how to either market, on how to utilize uh, Daniel, the car, the music, on bringing people together. And then also, it gives us uh, content for, for new music. Like I said, the record with Trace Atkins and Luke Bryant, where the, where the country girl's at, is my experience in Daytona 500. So you're going to be hearing a lot about the experiences on records. So next one you might hear about Charlotte and, or Homestead or, or Nashville, or should we call it Cashville? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nash Vegas. I'll put that in the rhyme. See, Nashville, Cashville. There it is. Yeah, write it down. Somebody write it down for you. <laughs> We're going to do Lee and then we're going to do Dustin real quick. Justin, what grade would you give your team so far this season? I'm very, very proud of all the work that our guys have done. I mean, they've all earned A's so far. I mean, this is a very, very difficult, um, very difficult industry and a very difficult racing series. The most competitive form of racing there is in North America. And for a group of young guys, our guys are young. I mean, our race, we have a very young race team and they're very hungry. And they all come from forms of racing where they've won, so they don't know how to lose. And they don't go to the racetrack and know how to lose. So they, they, they're thinking in the context of, they're not thinking like, well, we're a new team, you know, maybe we should be running 20th. No, they're coming to the racetrack trying to figure out how to win the race. But they're great at managing their expectations too. And we, also, we all know that, that this is a big fight. I'm really, really proud of those guys. I mean, we, we've been bringing great race cars to the racetrack this year. Um, you know, Daniel, Daniel's been doing, doing a great job. Um, you know, I, I, I've been telling people this. I mean, I, I, we've been very careful to make sure that our expectations, our definition of success our first year is not in finishing positions first and foremost, X amount of top tens or this average finishing position. It's about getting better every week. It's about working together, empowering each other, lifting each other up and, and working very hard to try to make big things happen. And they've been doing that every week. I mean, that's the most important thing for us this year because we're all dealing with new equipment next year. And so to this year is about the process, dialing in the process, so we as a team cohesively can enter the future together. I'm really proud of all of them. And Armando, you talked about music uniting people and bringing us all together, giving people the opportunity to, 
to study technology and math and science, won't that also elevate them so they can, you know, feel part of the whole as well? Is that kind of your end game here as well? Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. And, and as far as we, we see where the future is going, we see that the youth loves uh, technology and loves to be involved with it. The only message that I always say to the youth and to the public and to the world, utilize technology, don't let it use you. So this is also a way of creating awareness for wellness for technology, which is things we do in the schools, and that's why I can speak so openly about it. But yes, to be able to utilize the car, utilize the music, and utilize technology clearly is going to create a melting pot for everybody to be involved. And it gives access to everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank Last you. one, Dustin, and we got to, because the practice starts in a few minutes. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, Justin, uh, Chris Rice yesterday, a colleague, was saying he wasn't quite sure how many more charters might be purchased this year. So what makes you feel confident that you can do so? And two, um, do you look, have to look at the possibility of running without a charter, what that would do? Um, yeah, well, we're going to race no matter what. I mean, we're, we're going to race uh, no matter what because we're just we're all too passionate and too invested and too focused on on you know, the opportunity in front of us for track house. So, so I mean, one hundred percent, we're racing next year. Um, you know, what, what gives me confidence? I, I mean, I believe in I believe in our vision. Uh, I believe in in the promise of this team, and I know in my my experience has been if you're if you're motivated and work towards the right things and try to do the right work and good work. Um, that things will happen for you. And so, um, so we continue to, to fight that fight. And um, I, I think, you know, I, I have to be optimistic. I mean, we're all optimistic. Armando and I are both optimistic people because we believe in what we're doing. And, um, and you know, we, we, will, we will continue to work hard to ensure our future. That's, that's... I know, but but the thing is, is that it's it's if you believe if you believe in what you're doing and fight, I can't sit at home at night and stress out about things I can't control. That's not how I want to live my life, and that's not how I'm going to run run this race team. So you know, quality of life and belief in what we're doing and fighting hard every day to ensure our future is what my focus is. All right, we're going to uh, cut it off here. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks for uh, the engagement. We're going to do, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Right. And, well, uh, thank you guys. Really appreciate you. Appreciate the opportunity. You guys have a great you. day and enjoy the race. Hey, Armando, somebody that's never listened to music, what's an intro song? An intro song? Yeah. It depends what you want. You want street? You want crawl? You want crawl? Make you feel good. No, Skip is on street. Yeah, street. Go to 305 A. 305 A. 305 A.